This past weekend, Momocon 2024 went down in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, and it was a cavalcade of upsets, big losers runs, and rising stars. Today, we'll be covering every single notable event from the Smash Ultimate bracket of Momocon. The sweltering heat of Georgia pounding down on the top players of the United States. And when you're in the heat, what else can you do but be dressed for the occasion, using the help of Into the AM? Into the AM is an apparel company partnered with my channel, dedicated to helping you chase your passions by providing you with high quality apparel. And now, get up to 25% off store wide as a part of the Spring Memorial Day collection. Unlike usual, use my special affiliate link in the description or pinned comment below for a special discount on this spring apparel. Get everything you need to brave the summer of Smash ahead of us. Whether you're planning another trip or just traveling locally, for competing, commentating, spectating, or any other involvement in the summer of Smash, Into the AM can help you out for your every apparel need. They've sent me over some of their offerings to showcase, and not only are they tremendously comfortable, but as someone with no talent in fashion, you know it's good when it makes even me look like I know what I'm doing. Do us both a favor and get a fashionable new outfit from my good friends at Into the AM. Now, let's get back into today's video, shall we? As Momocon got underway, our top seeds entering into the event included Tweak, Light, DeBuzz, and Cosmos, among others. Tweak DQ'd before the tourney even began, as we covered in our pre-tournament analysis of Momocon, and starting off the weekend, the top seeds were very hopeful on taking the tournament, with the only one of them having won a major in 2024 being Light. And while Momocon was a national, not a major, everyone else was hoping to win their first large tournament of this ranking season. But as we got underway, the upsets began to roll in. And the first victim was one of our top eight seeds, none other than Mr. E, who got defeated by Steve Main DJ Don 3-1, a victory that clocked in at an upset factor of four and cast Mr. E down into loser's bracket for an eventual 17th place finish as the eighth seed. And Mr. E wasn't the only top eight seed to get upset early. Cosmos, the fifth seed, lost to Mugen, the 28th. This was a close game five set, which clocked in at upset factor five, with Cosmos dropping into losers and also eventually placing 17th. A pair of smaller upsets followed after this, with another top eight seed falling victim. Jazo defeated Beast Mode Paul, the number six seed, 3-0. And DJ Don got another upset over Omega, the ninth seed, 3-1. Although, unlike the other upset victims we've covered so far, we'll actually be returning to both BMP and Omega later on, since they would go on notable losers runs after being upset. But now it's time for the two largest upsets of the tournament, and you may be wondering how the upsets get even bigger from here. After all, of the top eight seeds, half of them are already gone. But oh boy, we're not even getting started. DeBuzz, the third seed of the tournament and a hopeful to take the whole thing, lost in a Game 5 set to Wolfmane Danny in a sadly unstreamed set that clocked in at upset factor 6, tied for the largest of the entire tournament. Yes, I said tied, we'll come back to it later. For now, DeBuzz dropped into loser's bracket pretty dang early. Once here, DeBuzz beat Mr. E in a Game 5 set, which eliminated the 8th seed early, before losing 3-0 to Beast Mode Paul, who had also been upset early. This ended up eliminating DeBuzz at 13th as the 3rd seed. But if it makes you feel any better, DeBuzz did end up placing top 3, just in the Street Fighter 6 bracket. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Danny, to contrast, would eventually end up placing 9th as the 19th seed after losing back-to-back -back sets to Jazo and Riku. But observant viewers will notice that I said to Buzz Danny was tied for the largest upset of the tourney. That's because Light, the second but effectively first seed, got upset early on in bracket two. This time, it was from Kobe, who I said I wanted to do well in my pre-tournament analysis. In a game five set, Kobe defeated Light in an upset factor six win sending the second seed crashing down into loser's bracket. Once there, Light defeated Cosmos 3-1, which eliminated the number six seed early, before being upset again, this time by Chunky Kong. The last time they had fought at Collision, it went game five, but Light had won in the end. This time though, Chunky Kong won the set 3-0 in an upset factor five win, which eliminated Light at 13th place as the second seed. Sadly, this set was off stream, since apparently Light requested it to be off stream. But there is thankfully some hand cam footage I was able to find, and the full VOD should be uploaded to Chunky's YouTube channel later this week. Kobe, on the other hand, would eventually place ninth after losing back to back against Wrath and Omega. When you look at the broad strokes, DeBuzz and Light actually had near identical runs. 
They were both top four seeds who both got upset in a close game five set, both defeated a fellow top eight seed in loser's bracket before both losing to an eventual top eight finisher. And as for the player who defeated them in winner's bracket, responsible for the two biggest upsets of the entire tournament, both of them eventually placed ninth, barely missing out on top eight. It's almost suspiciously similar. But that about wraps it up for upsets not connected to a top eight finisher in some way. So it's now time for us to go over said top eight finishers, seeing their runs both to and within the top eight. Let's start with the loser side, since we've actually covered a good bit of it already. Chunky Kong, after defeating Light, beat DJ Don 3-1 to make top eight from loser's side, overcoming Steve to do it. Beast Mode Paul, after defeating DeBuzz, went on to beat Teaser 3-0 to make top eight making it there despite having been upset by Jazo early on in bracket. Omega was also upset early on by DJ Don, but tore through the loser's bracket, 3-0-ing Vendetta, Vivid, and Kobe to make top eight from loser's side. And our last top eight finisher was Riku, the Florida Steve main who made top eight at last year's CEO. Here in his home state, Riku had a crazy trip through bracket, defeating Goblin 3-0 and then having two back-to-back -back game fives, defeating both Aaron and Danny 3-2 to make top eight from loser's side. The loser side of Momokan's top eight was filled with rising stars who had upset the top seeds, but the winner side was just as chock full of breakouts. Let's first cover the only top eight seeds who actually made top eight. The first one was Cola, the fourth seed, who 3-0'd both Goblin and Teaser to make top eight from winner's side. The other top eight seed who managed not to fall early was Wrath, who made top eight by defeating Chunky Kong and Kobe, both in 3-1 victories, to make winner's side top eight. Now it's time for us to cover the two breakouts on the winner's side of bracket, and coincidentally, both of them use FGC characters. Wilds is the young Kazuya prodigy who first defeated Wasabi the Greninja before beating DJ Don 3-0. The second Shoto star is Jazo, who defeated Beast Mode Paul 3-0 in a set where apparently Paul tried to play Samus. But Jazo then defeated Danny just as easily to make top eight from winner's side. And with that, our top eight is filled. Winner's side consisted of two terrible matchups, those being Sonic versus Ken and Roy versus Kazuya. And these sets went exactly how the matchups would suggest they would, with Wrath defeating Jazo and then with Wilds getting the upset over the fourth seed, Cola. This means that winner's finals was another minus two, Wilds versus Wrath. And just as the matchup charts would suggest, Wrath swept Wilds 3-0, moving into grand finals from winner's side and casting Wilds down into loser's finals. Flanking right behind are both Cola and Jazo in loser's quarters, and then the two sets of loser's eighths, Omega vs. Riku and Chunky Kong vs. Beast Mode Paul. Let's start with the more dominant of the two sets. Omega, who had lost to DJ Don Steve early on in bracket, lost to yet another Steve here in losers, being defeated by Riku 3-0, and eliminated at 7th place. On the other side of bracket, it was much closer, but in the end, Chunky Kong defeated Beast Mode Paul in a Game 5 set, moving on in bracket and eliminating BMP at 7th place. This meant that Chunky Kong moved on to fight Jazo and Riku moved on to fight Cola. Of these two sets, the more dominant one was between Jazo and Chunky. Jazo managed to win the set 3-1, advancing into loser semis and eliminating Chunky Kong at 5th place, which is better than last year's Momokan placement of 7th. And with a win over Light on the way, Chunky Kong joins Robert Kukusu with making the monkey month of May a dramatic reality. The other side of loser's quarters ended up going to a game 5, but in that game 5, Cola managed to clutch out a set over Riku 3-2. If Cola had lost this set, losing to Kazuya and Steve, then I think the Cola Cloud or Aegis probably would have come out in future tournaments. Either way, Riku was eliminated at 5th place after yet another breakout run. With this win, Cola moved into loser semifinals in order to face off against Jazo. And this is a top four seed we're talking about here, one of only two top eight seeds left in the entire bracket. But Jazo was on something else at this tournament and managed to defeat Cola 3-1, eliminating Cola at fourth place as the fourth seed the only top eight seed to place as originally intended. And so, Jazo moved into losers finals and went up against Wilds, the Shoto showdown of the century. Ultimately, Jazo's run proved to be unstoppable, winning against Wilds 3-0 to move on in bracket, and eliminate Wilds at third place. But Wilds is probably the breakout star of this tournament, going on an insane run with several phenomenal wins. Either way, Jazo entered into grand finals from loser's side, going up in the runback from winner semis against Wrath. But all of his momentum, all of his fierce fire, all of the unstoppable potential in the world was no match for one thing, a minus two matchup. 
Somewhat anticlimactically, Wrath swept Jazo 3-0, more dominant than their first set had been. And so, Jazo was eliminated at second place and Wrath won Momocon 2024 as the seventh seed. This tournament was pure chaos, with upsets and big runs aplenty. Plus, even Wrath winning had some very interesting implications. Like I said in my pre-tourney analysis, Wrath pretty much hasn't gone to anything all year, his only other non-local offline tournament being a 9th place finish at Level Up Expo. Honestly, I'm not sure if Wrath even meets the attendance requirement to be ranked in the fastly approaching mid-year ranking. Either way, with the top 8 seeds falling en masse and new breakouts placing in the top 4, it's honestly fascinating to think about how this tournament will affect the rankings. But that's still somewhat far from now. For today, though, that's going to be it for today's video. Before I go, shout out to my patrons Seth Laster, Fireskull 33, Logan S, Persipom, Wawa, Mr. Sinister, Happy Feet, Ocean Man, Mistybot, and my tier 2 patrons Iltis, Diamond Blaze, and Ben L. Additionally, shout out my YouTube members Dicho Jr., Defective, Boston R, Gonesis B, Kirby Fan, Nexus, Loco Soko, and my tier 2 members Mike G, Wu Tang Forever, and Storm Troiber. Also, shout out my gifted tier 2 members What Are Usernames, Ruby Mac, Master, Kuro Ruko, LWB74, and Enchanted IBE. Lastly, extra special thanks to my tier 3 supporters Fat Blizzard, who says Big D will make it out of his slump, Avidune, who says Mr. Rice is the go to smash content, Iltis, who says MKLeo always comes back, and Grant I am. If you want to support me using any of these methods, links are in the description down below. Don't forget to use my coupon code RISTER in order to get 10% off of any order from Into the AM. And lastly, I want to give one last sincere thanks to Let Me Fly for their continued support of my channel. Link to their Twitter page is also in the description. Don't miss tomorrow's upload, but until then, I've been Rooster Mice, and thank you all so very much for watching.